Good evening. I'm David Dodman, and along with Gordon McGranahan and Barry Dalal Clayton, I'm one of the authors of the report on integrating the environment in urban planning and management. It hardly needs to be stated that the quality of urban environments is vital to the well-being and livelihoods of the ever-growing proportion of the world's population who live in towns and cities. Equally, it should be clear that the policies that are made and implemented in urban areas and the action of city stakeholders, including local governments, private enterprise, civil society groups and individuals, will fundamentally shape the natural environment in areas far beyond their boundaries. With that in mind, it's very appropriate to be launching this report at the World Urban Forum, which provides the opportunity for engaging with significant urban concerns in an integrated manner, and in which environmental dimensions should be taken very seriously indeed. The report firstly tries to make sense of the range of different issues that can be framed as environmental concerns in urban areas. It takes an approach that recognises both the localised issues of public health, sanitation and waste management that are particularly challenging for low-income cities, as well as the far-reaching environmental consequences of high levels of wealth and consumption that reach way beyond city and national boundaries. This is one issue that's currently being taken forward by UNEP with their work on resource-efficient cities. The report also looks at the various strategies that have been used already to integrate the environment in urban planning and management, including city development strategies. One of the particular challenges that is highlighted in this regard is the importance of taking nationally mandated planning cycles into account. There are a large number of toolkits for integrating environmental concerns into urban planning. So this report focuses on identifying the underlying principles and the enabling factors. These include broad-based participation by urban residents, political support and commitment, and the identification of appropriate funding streams which can come from a wide range of sources. Approaches and principles for integrating the environment in urban planning and management are relevant for several of the major global agendas under development and for which 2015 will be a significant year. The latest indications are that the Sustainable Development Goals will have a focus on sustainable urbanisation, which can only be achieved through urban planning and management that takes the environment seriously. We hope that COP21 in Paris will be the site of a landmark agreement on climate change, and cities have a substantial role to play in limiting greenhouse gas emissions and in reducing vulnerability for their residents. Similarly, the next phase of the Hugo Framework for Action, which is also forthcoming in 2015, is likely to show increasing recognition of the need for urban planning and management as a key means for reducing risk from disasters. To close, it's worth mentioning that this report was a very collaborative effort. The commitment and inputs from UNEP and Cities Alliance were vital, but making sense of the ways in which the environment has been and can be integrated in urban activities requires learning from city officials who engage in planning and management on a daily basis. So I'd like to thank the learning and leadership group participants in Accra, Kampala and Manila, who provided considerable insights and helped to ground the analysis in city realities. I'm very sorry that I can't be there with you in person for the launch, but I hope you find the report interesting and useful. <laughs>